now. Alrighty, so here's home for the next two days. It's not the nicest place in the world, but when you book at the last second, it's in the middle of the summer on a weekend, prices are expensive. So I'll be 99 bucks a night for uh, this little hole in the wall. Literally, looks like uh, somebody stole the smoke detector. Okay, my first good target in North Carolina on this trip. It looks like the first good one's gonna be a 1958 D wheat penny. Only second target I dug, the first one was just a little piece of aluminum. Okay, let's keep looking. Mm, bathroom's dated, but the cool thing about this place is the building in the front of this property is actually really cool. Um, it's wood and stone. Uh, the architecture is pretty cool, and it actually was built in 1939, not the building I'm in here. So uh, there's uh, an old hotel on this property, which is in front. They offered me one of those rooms, which I checked out. The only thing is, for some reason, they don't have um, controlled AC units, so it runs off of all uh, one run, so you can't control your temperature. And they were like freezing, so I was like, I'll take the building in the back. That hole right there wouldn't be a typical JD hunt without a 1959 first year memorial. I picked up about six or seven wheats now, two of them were in a spill, and I know one is at least uh, 1920s, so a lot of old pennies in this yard. And I had hunted this yard on my trip here last year, and that's right around that big tree is where I found uh, um, a silver bracelet that was uh, about 100 years old. So it's cold that a year later, almost a year later, I'm able to get a permission next door. So here we are. That's a really depressing picture. But anyway, this will have to do for now. I probably won't be in here a lot anyway. Hey, at least I got a mini fridge. Oh, and up front, they had cantaloupe. So that's pretty cool. Get free breakfast too. I got a signal here that I'm hoping is a silver coin. It changes numbers uh, the different directions. But this direction it hits 90, 91. It shows a decent depth when I pinpoint. So hopefully that's a silver coin. I'm gonna dig it up, we'll see what we have. Okay, I'm down in the hole. It's got the right depth and pinpointing small. So we're gonna finish it live. See if it is a silver coin. Oh, I just popped it out. Yes, it is. Let's get the glove off. Looks like a mercury button dime. I think I see the band there on the back. Yep, it's a mercury dime. It's a tricky signal the one direction. The ground's super dry here. So you gotta work the permissions really slow. All right. On the board with some silver for the trip. Now I can just relax. So alrighty. All right, let's check out the bathroom. Man, this is dated. Old olive green toilet. And this is like 70s. This hasn't been updated in like forever. This is why the signal is coming in low 80s one direction. This is right here where I just pulled out that silver dime. There was still a 79 to uh, 78 signal still in the hole and it's a penny. I think that mark might be an old one too from the strike of it. So this might be a really old spill. And from the looks of this wheat penny, that's definitely an older one. I'm gonna guess 1920s on that one. So that mark could be teens or 20s. But uh, let me clean this up a second. We'll see what this is. I don't want to rub the silver. Okay, it's hard to see on there, but it's 1916. Making this coin 100 years old this year. So happy birthday to you, Weedy. Woohoo! Got a nice bigger high signal here. It's double hitting a little bit, but it's hitting in the mid 80s. That could be a silver coin, like a bigger one, like a quarter. But it could also just be aluminum. A lot of aluminum pieces off the, the, from the building materials for this house. I'm gonna say that one's probably not gonna be a silver coin, but it may be something interesting. 
Hopefully not just aluminum. We'll see. Okay, that signal dragged a little bit because right out of this part of the, uh, this little flap there, I just pulled a memorial out of there, but you can see it looks like it's high relief, like it's from the 60s. And then once I cleared that up, the signal's a real nice 88. And I'm down to it and it's nice and concentrated. So if that's an early 60s penny, this could be a, you know, like a silver Washington quarter in the hole with it. I don't, I haven't dug any cloud this deep here yet. It's really hardly any cloud at all. Just gotta be careful, there's some ants in there. Nope. Oh, it's a clad dime. So that's an old spill. This clad dime's probably from the late 60s. Okay, I'll check it again with the detector, see if there's anything else in there. Old clad spill, anyway. Okay, there's a shot of the house. I'm working the steep slope right in the front. I always checks these slopes because it erodes away. You never know where coins are going to be. I had a nickel tone I thought was going to be aluminum. And see them by a little, little drainage right there. and. I just went down about an inch. There's a nickel down there, so let's flick it out, see if it's old. Dude, that looks old. Oh my goodness. I don't know what that is. That might even be a V-nickel. Who knows? I actually just dug a buffalo a minute ago, but I didn't film because there were some people watching me. Wow. We'll get that cleaned up later, see what it is. That could be a V-nickel. All right, so what an awesome start to the little vacation here. If I didn't get any more hunting in, I'd already be happy. But before this dries off, I'm gonna show this first. Because you can hardly see it when it's dry. But that toasted nickel is a V-nickel. Man, but it's really slick and really corroded. Um, but I think I can see like a 1.8, I'm pretty sure it's in one of the 1800s V-nickels. The back's just like gone. If I scrub at it a little bit, you probably will see the V come through a little bit more. But yeah, there you go. A V-nickel, over 100 years old. And um, I didn't show everything. That one spill I was working on where I pulled the penny and the dime out, I did get a quarter out of that hole too. too. I knew there was at least one quarter in there. It was in 1967, so that spill was probably from the late 60s. Just missed the silver years. We got a little bit of clad out of that yard. I got this little button out of the hole with a piece of aluminum. Um, and then got some other really good finds. Um, I ended up with 10 wheat pennies, and I didn't clean them all off yet, but uh, there are some old ones in there too. And um, this one was probably the, the nicest old one. You can see right there, pretty clear, 1927. And um, that awesome spill, that 1916 wheat penny, and the Merc did end up being old, so this was an old spill. If this would have been a 1921 Merc, I would have had a mini heart attack. They're worth a good bit of money, but this one's a 1924. Pretty nice detail on it. Beautiful coin for a 20s Merc, so man, that, this was an awesome way to start the vacation, and two finds it in film. This was playing mind tricks with me when I dug it. I thought it was just a piece of something. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, is that a toy gun or something? I still don't know. That's one heck of a thick barrel if that's supposed to be a toy gun. It's got some little marks on the top there. Somebody tell me what this is. Is this supposed to be a little toy gun? I have no idea. It's a really odd piece. It was down a good ways too. And um, I did get a buffalo nickel too, and I scratched the tar out of this one with the shovel. The soil, the ground's really mineralized here. Um, so the coins, the non-silver coins come out really crusty, but uh, that's a 1936 buffalo nickel. A lot of detail on it, but like I said, crusty. So I don't know, North Carolina for me is the land of the buffalo nickels. Last time I was here for two days, I found like four buffalo nickels and I got one today. So that's a good sign. So maybe I'll go out this evening and see if I can get me a nickel trifecta on the day. See if I can get me a silver war nickel or something. So uh, awesome start right there. So let's keep going. 
channel. Hunting a permission now that I think is going to be awesome. I'm not going to film a lot because I'm right on the corner of a busy intersection. But uh, I got two wheats and two modern coins already. Look at this in this dry dirt, about an inch down. It wasn't I thought it was going to be another clad dime? It's a Merc. I think it's 1940 something, but a beautiful one. I think this permission is going to be awesome. Cool story with it too. I'm in a really neat area. Okay, I think this is the fifth wheat penny. It was down a good five inches. I uh, filled the hole back in. It was down there a good ways. This really hard, powdery ground. But uh, anyway, it's the oldest uh, coin so far. A lot of coin tones in this yard and no trash either, like next to no trash. Can't tell if you can see that on there, but uh, it's 1918. So almost 100 years on that one. The house was built in 1916, so right around the time it was built. Okay, we're gonna do this semi-live. Because I think I may have a silver coin here. It's hitting solid 93.94 every time. Really tight signal. Pinpoint small too, about four inches. I don't know, this could be a half dollar, maybe a silver quarter, I'm really hoping. We'll see. Okay, this one's too good to pass up doing it live, so I cut the plug, so we're gonna try this together. I see something right there on the plug. Oh, dude, somebody's keyless entry for their car. And battery's probably what's giving off a crazy good signal. It's a Ford. Oh well. Interesting anyway. A high signal close to the surface looks like where a tree was removed. Thought maybe a silver coin was pushed up. And it's this. It rang up really high. Not very old. But an interesting pin anyway. Something different. I think I have six or seven wheats now. This is fun. Well, that shows you how hard this ground is. Got that penny about three to four inches down. It's a weedy. The 59 Memorial strikes again, except this one's a Denver. Got one and two permissions in a row. Right on. Okay, wasn't expecting this. Big ol' hoop earring. I'm right by the corner of the intersection, so. This is probably dropped by somebody standing by the corner here. Um, I think it's junk, but uh, I don't know. That post almost looks silver there. It's been down there at least a few years anyway. It wasn't too deep. I'll check it out later. Some jewelry, bling a bling bling. Someone tell me why people do these types of things. I got a really good signal. It is three zinc pennies taped together. They've been down there a while though, man. Let's see if I can see the year on one of them. Let's see how old they are. Obviously, uh, 80s or 90s, most likely. Yeah, that one's 1992. Can't tell on that one. With how deteriorated they are. 1990, yeah, last digit, oh, it almost looks like a seven, I don't know, but uh, Probably in the mid-90s, somebody had taped these together and lost them. Yeah, something different. There was a lot of work done in this yard in sections. I thought it had a wheat penny with like mint luster on it there. As you can see, I had more zinc pennies that were stuck together. There's still more down in the hole there. I'm in the sun, I can't really see through the viewfinder right now. Now that one's copper, that's why I got such a high signal. Um, all these pennies here are in the same hole. That one's zinc. This one was stuck to another one, even though it was five inches down. You can see it's almost like brand new. It's 2000. There's another one in there. Another zinc. This must have been from the same thing. Look, that one has tape on it. Hmm. You got another one of them buttons. I just pushed the pine straw back and sitting right there on top of the ground. Alrighty, let's keep moving. 
Okay, had a nice solid 58 nickel tone about four inches down and it is a nickel. It's a Jefferson nickel. And doesn't seem all that old. Well, 1962. That's fairly old. In the right range for silver anyway. Hey guys, I'm filming by this intersection and I don't really care. There's a shot at the house for you, but anyway, I've been hunting around the yard there. I found a lot of wheat pennies. It's been slow going and it kind of dried up a little bit. I decided to hit the oversized sidewalk strips here and I pulled a 1919 wheat penny right over here really deep. And I had a nice uh, deep signal here, like 88. I thought it could be a really deep silver coin. You can see it there. I worked at this signal for almost 10 minutes, getting down in between the roots from these big trees here. And I got down in under there and I finally popped it out about seven inches down. And it's a standing Liberty quarter. It's pretty beat up. I actually don't think I scratched it. It already has like an old gouge mark. You can see that's on both sides. You can see the date on it, 1930. It's the last year of the Standing Liberty Quarters. Oh, that's sweet. All right, I'm gonna work these strips a little bit more thorough, see if there's any more down there. Okay, this is weird, but last time I was in North Carolina, I found one of these. This was really shiny right on top. It's a punched zinc penny. We're in 2003 D with a cross punched in it. That's really sweet. They must do that in the downtown area here. So I found one last time, crazy. Okay, I'm glad I went over the yard one last time because I think I found a silver signal I missed. That's a good one, man. And it's, I think this hole right here, I think that's where I pulled the, uh, one of the nickels. That's 62 nickel, I think. Oh man, that's a good one. 87, 88. Man, about six inches, seven inches too. So we've got the right depth. We'll dig it up, we'll see what it is. I popped the plug and down on the bottom of this loose dirt, I can already hear it with the pin pointer. So I'm gonna try to scoop it out live. See if it is silver. Pretty much touching it. Should be right here. Come on, where are you hiding? Ooh. Is that silver? It doesn't look silver. 1965? Good grief, look how shiny that is. This is real powdery. They did do a lot of work here. Maybe there's more down there. Yeah, there's more down there. Here we go. <laughs> That's clad too. They were stuck together. That's why they were preserved. They're not silver though. Well, I guess two clad dimes will give you a silver signal. Yeah, look how shiny those are. Well, one's 1965. I'm sure the other one's probably around the same time. Just missed it on those. Cool dig anyway. Well, hello again. Welcome to wrap up number two. Got two good yards in a row, but let's just check out this bathroom again now that I have the light on in there. It, the whole thing is mint green. It's like a vintage bathroom. I don't even know if I want to use it. Ugh. Anyway, not a lot of trash today. Man, these yards are clean. Most of that aluminum came from the first yard, and these were pieces from the um, the house and then the other place the second place had um, brass roofing so I got some of them triangle shards some of them brass and then aluminum from the aluminum ones for the other place but other than that other than some aluminum and brass pieces like literally I have not dug one bottle cap yet and I've been digging those signals so I take it I like them clean yards we'll take that all day long but let's get over here to the the second yard which worked out really well and I love them sidewalk strips. Picked up this right here. That penny with the cross. Stamped through it. And I got a little pallet clad there. Found this right before I left. 
walking up the street on a sidewalk strip, little bouncy ball. Um, got my, what is that, like six zinc pennies with tape all through them. They were found in various parts of the yard, really weird. That yard had had a lot of work done, so some of the old coins were like right on top and some of the cloud was buried. And they did a lot of tree removal and work around the sidewalks. And, but man, there was stuff down there. Uh, wheat pennies, look at that. I ended up with 15 wheat pennies. And um, there was that 1918, and this is the one I pulled out of that sidewalk strip right before I got that SLQ. I was surprised when I pulled it out how much, how clear it was, 1919. I'll have to clean it up a bit more, but yeah, some older ones there. I got those two pins, which I'm not sure what they're uh, for, but uh, they look political in nature, so we'll leave it at that. Got that big hoop earring. I can't find a marking on it, but it could actually be silver. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to test it later. But it's probably just junk. It's solid the whole way through, but it could just be like pot metal or something. I don't know. Uh, I got this here. Not really sure if it's a bullet or what. It's not old and oxidized, so if it is a bullet, it's not too old. Um, and just that little piece of lead there. And then to the silvers. Got this, uh, look at that mercury dime. Still has some original luster on it. Beautiful condition. I love when they come out like this. Not quite full bands, but has a tiny bit of wear on it, but not much. Probably a low end AU coin. And then the find that really made my day. Yeah, I almost dropped it. It's a 1930 SLQ. I put the scratch that runs the whole way across there. Had to dig it out under those those big roots, but not a big deal because it already had a huge gouge mark in the side. Almost like on both sides, almost like somebody got it with wire snips or something. I have no idea, but hey, glad the date's still on there. It's the recessed date style, so the dates stayed on them longer. But hey, we'll take that. And I'm using the uh, ghetto drain stopper here while I'm cleaning stuff off because there's no no drain stopper here. Just like everything else is missing in this room. So I have a little styrofoam cup plugging up the hole so I don't have to call maintenance to get my standing liberty quarter out of the P-trap. So there you go, guys. Another great hunt. This is the totals for today. I think I'm going to wrap it up even though it's about 5 o'clock. It was a lot of digging in dry ground. And uh, I just want to chill for a bit. So see you next time. Channel. Cleaning up my finds here and getting everything put away and all that. And somebody upstairs, I think they flushed their toilet. Look at all that old mold. I heard dripping down there. I push this up. There's fresh water all down under there. Unbelievable. They've had would have had to have known about that leak. It looks like they've dried it about a hundred times. Look at all the staining on that uh, fluorescent light. So, needless to say, I'm asking for a new room. Yeah. And working yet another permission, same day, after a break. And um, pulled a wheat penny. It's just a small front lawn, so probably won't be too much here. But uh, I got that, and I got two 60s pennies already. So sweet. One last look. Say goodbye to the mint green bathroom. I'll miss you very much. Not. I ain't gonna miss this room at all. Let's go get a new one. You're not gonna believe it, guys. I did it again. You can see the imprint right there. About four inches down. Third permission of the day. And at every permission, I got a 59 memorial. First year issue. All right, so two Wheaties, two coins from the 60s, and, and a first year issue. So there's a. Uh, 50s and 60s coins in here. Hopefully I'll hit a rosy. Okay, so welcome to room 257. I'm on the top floor now, so nobody's pee will be leaking on my head from the ceiling. So, uh, it's the, as for the smell in this one, it's a step in the right direction, but still, it smells like stale cigarettes. But that's better than mold, right? Check out this AC unit. Let's get the blinds open here. Oh yeah, how do you like my curtains, by the way? They're so sad. Dude, this thing is ancient. Temperature, warmer, 
normer, a normer, normal, cooler. It looks like the button's in an old style blender. Guys, it's getting dark and it's starting to rain a little bit, so I could do this quick. I just wanted to show this. I just found something awesome. I found an engraved uh, silver cross. Oh, that is sweet. That is definitely an old one, too. All right, I gotta keep moving, though. Just getting mostly just pennies. That is awesome. Tube TV, no wonder. A little random chair that really does not make any sense why it's in a hotel room, but okay. There I am again. Hello. Uh, yay, no stains in the ceiling. And, but wait for it. I just cannot get away from the mint green bathrooms. Same deal here, except this unit's a lot cleaner. I guess the downstairs ones are a lot worse. This one's definitely a lot cleaner, so I will be much happier here than in that other room. That uh, cigarette smell and like moldy smell in that other room was horrible. They have a maintenance guy going to look at it because they told him it was literally dripping up in the tile when they used the plumbing upstairs. So let's just hope there's no bed bugs. Oh, please. Okay, I'm cracking up right now. I kept skipping the signal because it was a nickel signal like almost right on top. I thought it was just going to be a piece of aluminum and I just plopped down right there because I could pick it up with a pin pointer. Now it pops this ring. It rang up low. So it could just be junk, but maybe if I'm lucky, it'll be white gold. But I th think it feels kind of rough with my uh, thumb. So maybe it's plated. Maybe it'd have to be nickel if it's not white gold because it rang up really low. I don't know. We'll check it out later. Sweet. Okay guys, I'm really flipping out right now. I was on the right uh, frame of mind on this one. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be a junk ring, you know, to ring up you know, just kind of in the nickel range, because normally junk rings aren't made out of nickel, they ring up as high tones because they're, you know, like copper underneath. And I just, it didn't seem like white gold to me, um, but I started cleaning off nice and I got to see the mark. I'm not gonna be able to show it now, I'll clean up in a bit. It's my first ever, believe it or not, it's a palladium ring. Never thought I would find one of these. It was always a bucket lister for me to find either a platinum or palladium ring. So I am super stoked right now. And it's it's pretty chunky too, even though it's smaller. I mean, it's got to be five grams anyway, around in there. I think so. But uh, so sweet. So I'll get the fines cleaned up. Uh, right as it was getting dark, it just started pouring on me. So uh, I'm done anyway. I'm beat. That was my third permission of the day. I've probably been swinging, probably swung about six hours today in dry ground. So uh, man, I'm I'm beat. Palladium is a rare precious metal discovered in 1803 by William Hyde Wollaston and was named after the asteroid Pallas, which was discovered by a German astronomer just a year prior. Palladium's current primary use is in the manufacturing of catalytic converters, so the market value of the metal is closely tied to the global demand for motor vehicles. This ring is 95% pure palladium and at the time it was found contained about $77 worth of raw materials. However, these types of rings carry a high premium as jewelry and retail for around $400. Alright guys, back in the hotel room again. It's late at night. I went ahead and got one more permission today. Only filmed a little bit, um, but got some awesome stuff to show here. And some interesting stuff that's going on uh, TV right now. As I am uh, cleaning up my finds and doing some research and all that stuff, uh, they're doing a show on the Travel Channel. Um, not sure what it's called, where they're uh, going, taking items from museums in the U.S., doing backstory on the city um, of where those artifacts are held, and then they're dramatizing stories um, that go with those artifacts. And right now they're actually doing one on the 1913 Liberty Head Nickel, which is pretty cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's one of the rarest U.S. coins in existence. They only made five of them, I believe, um, and there's a big story that goes behind that. Uh, so anyway, at that last place, um, 
and it was all for the coins it was all pennies in the little yard I hunted except for one clad dime most of the changes from the the 60s uh, the pennies um, but it was a yard that had some utility lines um, dug up and some trees uprooted the ground was rock hard because it's extremely dry here so I'm only hunting lawns uh, where the grass is already dead basically and brown because it's just really that dry and hot out right now so that way I don't have to worry about killing anyone's grass um, but I did get a few wheat pennies from there um, I got five of them this one was hit by a lawnmower and the oldest one was 1925 so that brought the total today from the last two hunts there were 25 wheats so I dug 30 wheat pennies today um, this I cleaned up when I first found it I thought it was like an iron ball button um, but it has this uh, little thing on the front of it now that I cleaned it up I'm actually thinking it might be a miniature compass that's what it looks like to me um, if anybody knows any differently let me know on that one um, this find just absolutely blew me away it's my first ever palladium ring I mean it was a absolute bucket lister to dig a platinum or palladium ring and I never thought it would happen especially on land you can kind of see in there it's kind of weird glare there but it says uh, benchmark palladium on it and it's uh, got some weight to it as well I don't have a scale on me now but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say um, at least five grams anyway it's got a good bit of weight to it um, so I do have one more really good find to show, um, but man, that makes a great day of hunting. I found the SLQ, the couple Mercs, one old one and one in fantastic condition, the V-Nickel, the Buffalo, that cut penny, some other stuff. And um, the find, I mean, that palladium ring's awesome, but this piece here is more historic. I'm doing some research on it, and I'm trying to put the pieces the, to, the, um, together the best I can. Um, I'm not like extremely knowledgeable about World War II relics and things of that nature, but I'm thinking this may be a uh, World War II forget-me-not um, uh, a cross, I guess, uh, you know, a forget-me-not item. You can see there it has the initials EE on it. Oh, there we go. There's the 1913 Focus. There, there we go. There's the 1913 Liberty Head V-Nickel. They're still showing the story there. And um, anyway, I got to look in at the verbiage on the other side here. And this piece is definitely silver, even though it's not marked. You can tell it was worn as a pendant. And I can't make everything out on it. I, I'm really not sure what the first word is. I've tried to search for it in many different ways. Can't figure it out. But I did find out enough to know um, that this part here, I'm just going to show it briefly. The not sure how you pronounce it, but Nulla de Sign, or you know, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, Linnea, once again, I'm probably botching this real bad, but in Latin, if you take off the, well, the whole thing means no day without a line. So if you take off the last part, it means no day without. And then from seeing that, it uh, made more sense trying to figure out the last part. It's kind of a little tough to see the cursive on there. Um, but that made me to believe that the last part is a name and I believe as you can see there now V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A I believe it is so Victoria so it's something no day without Victoria regardless it's a really cool find I'm sure some of you are going to be able to give me more insight on this um, it, it's just this find blew me away so thanks guys for watching and I'm going to get back to watching the story on the 1913 V-Nickel.
Okay guys, so here's the scoop. I'm hunting this front lawn right now and I came over into the shade because there's very little cloud cover today. I'm hunting this brick house that was built in 1927. Uh, long story, I've been scouting for like four hours just driving all over the place today trying to find some interesting leads. I'm about an hour away from my hotel and I got permission to hunt around this house. It's amazing, there's a lot of history to it. It used to be a bed and breakfast a long time ago, so there would have been all kinds of travelers through here. And um, I, I've only done barely one pass, um, just randomly going around through the yard, and I pulled a wheat penny right away, about six inches down, and I had a faint signal about seven inches down, and I just pulled up an Indian head penny, which is even older than the house. Um, a lot of the houses right in this area, I guess most of them were built in the 20s, but really grand brick homes where there would have been a lot of money uh, back in the day. So, man, I have a feeling this property is going to be awesome. It doesn't seem like there's ever been any work done to any of this ground. So I'm just going to have to go slow and listen for them deep targets too. So let me clean this up a second, see if we got a date on this. Guys, from looking at the strike of this coin when I dug it, I knew it was going to be an old one. This is almost my oldest Indian head penny I've ever found. I did find an 1883 once that was in the hole with a shield nickel. And look at that, 1884. I'm like shaking. You can see all the little ridges around the rim. Oh man, it's going to be in awesome condition too. And that's my second target. Like, I I'm blown away right now. Wow, so I'm gonna get back to hunting and oh man, I can't imagine what's gonna come out of here. Let's keep going. I'm in behind the house now. I'm actually thinking maybe there was some fill used in the front yard. It's like a really fine powder and your shovel just goes right into it. And the targets were like six inches down. Well, the Indian was like closer to eight. I mean, it was really deep. Um, so I'm not sure, but I just wandered my way in back. Um, there's a fire pit right there, so there, and there's a lot of trash in through here. And um, I got back here toward the back end of the property, and I hit a nice um, mid-70s, mid or probably closer to higher 70s. I got about four inches down here, and I popped this old pin out of the hole, and it looks silver. Not the actual pin itself, but uh, yeah, look at that. The side of it look, definitely looks silver. Except, what do you call that? The post. Yeah, surprised that's still on there. That's going to be real fragile, though. Let me clean it off a little bit, see if I can see anything on it. Well, it definitely has the sterling mark under there. But if this is the side you wore it on, there's definitely something the front of it's missing, so I'm not sure what it would have said on it. I'm going to check around the hole real good, see if the other part's in there. But you can see down under there, it does say sterling. That's an old piece there. Man, that's awesome. Mosquitoes are bad. I'm gonna have to put my long sleeve shirt on. Okay, I got a faint signal uh, in the low 50s. Normally, something I don't dig all the time, but at a site like this, it came in solid. I was curious to see what it was. And I don't know what it is, man. Almost looks like some kind of little game piece. It's got the uh, wider base. I have no idea what that is. I thought it was the end of the pull tab, end of a pull tab when I first saw it, but it's pot metal. It's not aluminum. What is that? If you have any idea, comment and let me know. That's weird. I like it. I'm eating some pistachios, and I just found one that looks like a duck. It's got a big rusted iron buckle. Man, that one's in rough shape. Looks like that was the pin right there off to the side of it. It's just a big ball of rust. Still pretty neat. Check out this old fireplace. Love this thing. Figured I'd give you a look at that. You don't see them made of stone that often. Normally they're brick. It's definitely an old one, but uh, I got that pin right there. Uh, the buckle was over here. Still hitting some targets in this back end, which is a good sign. And flipped open this and get a penny right here. It wasn't very deep. Let's 
see if this one's old. I actually just got a 1962 penny over by that fireplace that I didn't film. This one's a memorial, but it's an older one, 1964. Sweet, and there's targets here. Okay, we're gonna try this one semi-live. It was bouncing anywhere from 80 the whole way up to 87, um, but the, the tone was good. And I'm just about on top of it with the pin pointer. So, we'll see what it is. Piece of aluminum. Back in the front yard, got a solid 80 signal that I'd missed on my first pass. And a really green disc. Is it another Indian? No, that one's a wheat penny. It's really crusty in the front. I'll clean it up, see if I can get the date. That one with a crusty blob on it, looks like it's 1942. We're on to a spill. I just pulled that other one right under here. Still a blast, an 80 signal up higher. Popped another penny out of the hole. That one may be a little older. That one may be 30s. But anyhow, it's another penny, and with the pinpointer, I still have a signal. And I'm right on top of it, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be another coin and not a nail. Because it's so close to where that other one was. Look right there. These were stuck together. You can see how blue that is. Nice. That one's 1945. And the other one was 42, and I can't read the other one, so these probably dropped right around the mid-40s. Not sure if there's more in there that's iron signals with the pinpointer. I'll check it again. This brief intermission is brought to you by Clorox, America's favorite. Well, it ain't my favorite. I'm back here by this little shack. I don't know, maybe it was some sort of kid's playhouse or something. I don't know. It has all kinds of old signage on it. You can't really read much. Crazy, man. Look at all that stuff. Wow. I bet there's some really cool relics down in there, too. The lady that lives here is really nice. Maybe she let me i going to root around back here someday. I'm going to see what this sign says. Yeah, it's upside down. S-K-U-R O-C Skrok I mean, I can't even tell. Hmm. Crazy. But hey, I'm locked into a good signal down over here. It could be something silver. Solid. High 80s. I'm going to turn the camera off and turn it back on when I pull the plug. My camera's about ready to die, and then I'll have to go get my spare battery for my car. Okay, I'm almost down on it, so... Let's try to do this before the camera dies. Ooh! Yay! We did squeak a silver out of this place. Back around where obviously all the trash is. It's a mercury dime. Looks like 1945. You can tell there used to be something sitting right in there. I don't, doesn't, I don't think it's a tree because I don't see any uh, remains of any roots. Uh, so I'm not sure what was in there. It would have been right in the front. So not sure, but it looks like some of the dirt got pushed around back this way maybe because it's kind of like mounted up there a little bit but anyway I'm over here in the bushes now on the side yard and I just popped out a wheat penny right there and 
I have a higher signal. We're about a foot away from it. Pinpointing pretty shallow, maybe three inches. Well, it's probably actually two the way it's screaming at me. I'm gonna mark this. And we're gonna do this one live. Nice high signal. So some roots right here. Them. Really not going to make plugs over here. It's just all brush. Can't really even make plugs. Let's get pinpointer going. Yeah, right down and about at it. Come on, silver. Ugh. These roots are something. Ooh, it's a silver ring, it looks like. It looks like an old one. Ooh. Let's check this out. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, I love these antique silver rings. Or is it silver? Is it copper? Is it plated? This one might be silver plated. I can't tell yet if that's mud. Oh, regardless, it's really cool. Well, it says something in there. Looks like it says 14 karat gold filled. So it might be copper, could be silver. Let me clean it off a second. You can see the mark there. 14K gold filled. And it's gold over copper because you can see a few areas around the edges where the plating wore through, like right around there. But it's a really thick uh, gold plating. So that's a neat find. It's been down there a little while. Not sure quite how old it is, maybe, maybe 30, 40 years, not too incredibly old. It's a great find nonetheless. And some finding stuff around the edges, kind of by the bushes, and I'm finding some powdery dirt uh, in certain areas. It makes me think there has been a lot of work done here. Which is weird though because I got that weed spill kind of in the middle and normally if um, they were pushed around from uh, work being done to the ground uh, It would separate spills like that. And you normally don't find uh, multiple coins in one spot that were like a spill It would have moved them around so um, Still trying to figure this one out There's targets here. Just got to really work for them. This property's trash too. Lots of pull tabs aluminum That's what you want. It's showing you there was people here and lots of them so let's carry on. There was definitely something tore out of this pit. Listen to this. Hmm. No idea what was there. There's huge pieces of metal down there. Okay, I'm on my way back from my car just uh, swapped out my battery. I was gonna try this one last signal and I was gonna leave. I've been here a couple hours and I got one of the typical pull tab signals here that was high 50s into the low 60s. It just hit and just sound just like a pull tab, but it was coming in solid and it had the depth. So I said, well, at least it's not, it doesn't seem like it's shallow junk. So let's get this one out of here. And some dirt fell back in the hole. Get some of the stuff out of the way here. When I saw it, I just saw the edge of it. I think it's a ring, and so the way it rang up, it might be a real gold ring. Let me see if I can find it here. There you go. It's yellow. Oh yes, oh yes, that is real. That's the real deal right there. Not, not plated. We. Oh man, look at that clean right up. Oh, beautiful. Oh, what's the marking? Looks like I'm gonna have to clean the dirt out of it. Looks like it's inside that little spot right there. 
Oh, sweet. It's a tiny little bugger. It's kind of like wide, but it's it's not very not very thick. Probably weighs a couple grams. Oh, that is awesome. Second gold ring of the year. Let me clean up that mark. You can see it right in there. Cleaned it off with some spit. 14k. Awesome. Doesn't have any maker's marks or anything. Just has that uh, 14k mark set down inside there. But that is definitely the real deal. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, I'm going to stick it out a little bit more here. Try to get some more faint targets. Obviously there was money here back in the day. Okay, went off to the other side, back where the garage is here. And I actually just found a 1950 wheat penny right there in the pine straw, from about six inches down. It was down there a good way, so I was actually surprised. But um, that's why there's stuff in this area. You can see there's a mobile home back there. Um, it's, in, it's trash. There's a pile of garbage mounted up back over there. Uh, but this right here was probably the original driveway. And then they added on the other one here over the years because this would have been off. This highway here is extremely old. So the access most likely would have come directly from that uh, back in the day, which is why I'm looking around the front, what, what I assume used to be uh, the front entryway here. And I looked back in over this way, over by this tree, and thought maybe it was used as more of like a front yard area back in the day, but I didn't really find anything in there. Uh, there's just a lot of aluminum trash, and the further down you get, a lot of trash from the highway from over the years. Um, but I got that 1950 penny right here um, by the old garage, which, uh, you know, it's the same brick as the house, so um, I'm assuming that's you know, been there just as long as the house, uh, unless they had some brick left over and did it at a later time, you never know. Um, so I'm gonna keep looking around here, try to get some more. Okay, I'm definitely gonna work this harder back in this jungle over here. This definitely was the original entrance. I'm finding stuff back down in here and all this brush and uh, garbage. Uh, just took that wee penny right there, had a nice solid 88, 89 here. It was down about four inches in this soft soil. You can see the edge of a silver dime. Looks like a silver rosy. Hey, 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 last year, 1964. We'll take them however you can get them. Nice. This is a blast. Hopefully there's some more right in around here. I mean, as I get close to that mobile home, it is gonna be a trash pit. Unbelievable. I'm gonna believe this. Man, when I was a kid, I think I had this uh, these same exact Fisher Price chairs. We had a little table. They were the same color, blue like that. Off the old driveway, I got a deep faint 76, uh, right about where that one wheat penny came. And uh, I got down there, and look at this little thing. Gave me a heart attack for a second. I thought it was like a trine, but it looks light, maybe aluminum, maybe it's a piece of old play money or something. Maybe it's a thin button, I don't know. Let's get it out of there and take a look at it. Super light. Mosquitoes everywhere here. It's got something on it. Let me clean it up, we'll see what it is. Yeah, it looks like it's a piece of really worn old play money. You can see it looks like it says one dime at the top and then it had some sort of design on it. Old play money. Not too far away from the little kid's cabin. Uh, this is probably from about the 1950s. That's when they made them like this. Well, that's neat. Probably the best amenity of this hotel, believe it or not, the toilet paper is two ply. I'm working this property as thorough as possible for the time given. I'm on the side of the garage here. 
started kicking back some of the pine cones and working up along this edge and I hit a good signal that's showing some depth. Mostly 86 to 91. That could be a silver coin. Since I got the hand shovel, I'm gonna get the hole popped here and we're gonna see if we can find it together. When I popped the plug, it jumped out at me right away, so I didn't do it live. Just a piece of plastic in there too. It was just a copper ring. Thick one, man. That's why it rang up so good. Got a surprise in my hotel room. When I opened up the drawer, there's a penny on the phone book. Let's see what the year is. 1984. We'll take it. With all the good stuff I was finding up around the house, I couldn't help but come down by the road where all the traffic's coming through here because her um, property goes up just to a probably about six feet from the actual highway and I just had to come down around these old trees even though I didn't find anything you know halfway up around some of those old trees there I figured well on a property like this you just got to check everywhere you can get and as I was working my way toward this uh, big tree I had a blasting 90 signal and it had a little bit of depth on it and whatever it is it's big and I don't know I kind of rubbed the edge I don't know it's I can't tell if this is silver if it's aluminum. I don't know if this is going to be a token or a half dollar. I'm not sure. So let's pop it. It's not silver, but man, I think it's a token, man. A big one. Yeah, it's crusty. It's definitely aluminum. It looks like it has a ship on it. Oh, that's awesome. I have no idea what it's for. I'll have to clean it up later. But man, it's actually a little bit bigger than a half dollar. Wow. Well, it's time to pack it in on this hunt. The 1927 brick house has been good to me. So thank you to everyone for watching. Take care. Okay guys, I'm in a small town I've never been in before. Got permission to hunt around this beautiful 1926 brick house. And um, I found a few things. Um, <laughs> not this stuff here, you'll have to ignore that. My the seat, the floor area of my car is always a mess. But anyway, um, I found some neat stuff I'll show, but this is probably the most interesting find. I found another one of these little teeny little looks like a toy revolver. You can see the cylinder there. Um, but I did find um, some decent coins. Um, the homeowner, uh, the people that live here are really nice. I was talking with them a lot and uh, they wanted to keep this gun so I just wanted to show it on film here real quick and then I'm going to let them have it. I found one almost identical to this last year I believe. So uh, it's a pretty neat find right there. So I just wanted to show it before I give it off to the new owners and I'm going to keep swinging and uh, show you guys what else I get from this yard. Okay guys, so this is going to be the wrap-up video for the North Carolina trip. I hope you guys enjoyed the first four videos. I had a good time filming and making them. So uh, let's go ahead and just hop right into it. I didn't really do um, any filming the last day. I just hunted uh, one yard before I started heading back. Um, but anyway, I'll show you the better things from the last hunt that I didn't get on film, and then we'll break some of the other stuff down. So, and from that last clip on this video, these are the good finds that I made from that brick house. I found this 1924 Mercury Dime, which is kind of weird, um, because I found two 1924 Mercury Dimes in that trip, and the other one is right here. That was kind of odd. They're about in the same condition too, which even makes it even more odd. Um, but then I found this little sterling baby ring right before I left that last permission. I love these little silver rings. And I'm not sure if that's a garnet in it or what, but just a teeny little thing, barely even fits on the tip of my pinky. But old vintage piece of silver right there. So the, the 24 Merc and that ring were the good finds from the last permission. 
Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of the fines out of the middle and show them a little bit up close. This ring right here is all the clad I dug throughout the trip. I didn't count it, but it looks to be maybe about $4 worth. There's not a whole lot of quarters. Um, and then these little outer rings here are all wheat pennies. Um, I had them separated. I found a lot of old wheat pennies on this trip. I ended up with 38 total. Um, those are from the 50s. These, those wheat pennies are from the 40s. Um, these wheat pennies are from the 1920s and 30s. As you can see, a lot of the wheats are older. And I got a couple decent ones as well. You can see right there, that's a 29... Was that a D? I can't remember if it was D or an S. Can't see through the viewfinder here too well. Looks like a 29D. Um, and then a lot of the early ones, all those right there are teens wheat pennies. And the oldest one, which unfortunately is bent, is a 1911, so 20 out of the 38 wheat pennies I dug are pre-1940, so that was a huge huge success on the older stuff. Um, so to get into some of the other things, we got a couple of these um, pins, which thanks for everyone for pointing it out, because I, I always upload my videos, almost always, before doing the research on the items, and I couldn't, I couldn't remember what this stood for, but uh, D-A-R is um, Daughters of the American Revolution. So I found two of those pins in uh, two different colors. Some of the other finds. Let's go right to the other rings. I got my first ever palladium ring, which is 95% pure palladium. That was an awesome find. I got my gold plated, gold filled I should say, 14 karat gold filled ring. And then the ring that is gold the whole way through, which is 14 karat. It's um, a women's um, wedding band, I'm assuming. It's a very small size. So that was it, those three rings and the silver one. So I ended up with four rings on the trip, which was awesome. Some people commented on this find saying that it's a toy stirrup, most likely. And I seem to agree, I've never seen one before, but I was finding some uh, kids to old kids toys and uh, things in that yard, so that makes sense. Speaking of which, that's the yard I found this play coin in. It's probably from around the 1950s. I'll have to try to find one of these with more detail on it. You can't really even see much on these, but you can see it says one dime on it. Piece of old kids play money. Um, found that iron ring. I just love finding the older stuff like that. Um, the round iron sometimes fools the detector can give off a really good signal. But uh, this kind of iron's cool to dig anyway. So I'll dig them, dig, dig these around the old home sites all the time. Um, this here, this token, um, I didn't follow up on in the video. Um, but it's based on a black and white film from 1923, so it's it's pretty old. Yeah, it's the courtship of Miles Standish. But yeah, I, that was really cool when I researched that to find out that that was from oh, it's from a. It, not only was it a black and white film, it was from a silent film. Obviously, being that old, <laughs> apparently the. Um, the people that made the movie, it was a, a bust, and they went under after production. So uh, some interesting history to go on this one, if you want to uh, look that up on Wikipedia. Um, it's the, the movie was The Courtship of Miles Standish. Uh, some of the other things, I didn't actually didn't test this uh, hoop earring yet, but I'm pretty sure that one's just junk, so we won't spend any time on that. I found this uh, piece that I still believe is a compass, all rusted up. And I found a bouncy ball on the sidewalk strip, right where I found this stamped zinc, zinc penny. Love neat finds like that. Um, I didn't show these when I found them. I found these in the yard where I found the palladium ring. They were both in the same hole, and I'm pretty sure these are bird bands. Um, so unfortunately, this bird didn't make it. Um, I'm not sure how old they are. You can see, I'm not sure if these are ones that you can date or find out which bird they were on. As you can see, this one's badly corroded. This one I should be able to clean up a little bit more. 
but um, I'm thinking those are bird bands. If you know otherwise, let me know. But uh, they were found in the same hole. Uh, I found this aluminum button. And let's just, okay, let's go with the mis miscellaneous finds before we get into the other good coins. Now, this I didn't follow up on in the video part. This is that silver pin I found when I cleaned it up. You can see all that inside there. And I believe that's Mother of Pearl. So this pin, I actually believe, had a cameo in it. Um, and obviously it's deteriorated really bad now as that Mother of Pearl does not do well under the ground. But that was pretty neat. I'm going to try to clean a little more of the dirt out, but it's hard to get the dirt out without you know, damaging the other parts. So, um, But anyway, that's a really cool vintage sterling pin. Um, this piece was identified, I thought it was going to be some sort of measuring device, and here this is the elbow um, of like a folding ruler <laughs> and, and not a gun, <laughs> which it really looks like a little toy gun or something, it's kind of funny. Um, got a couple bullets that aren't too old, that's just a modern one, and I did get a lead bullet, um, but it's not oxidized, it doesn't seem too old to me, so I don't think, I think that's from the 1900s. Um, I just randomly threw that in there, a little fuse. Um, let's see, that's pretty much it other than the coins except for this. And I was told by some viewers that it pretty much means no day without a victory and that most likely that this, well I mean can actually date anywhere from the Civil War up until World War I seemed to be the general consensus. Um, I mean it doesn't look like it would be Civil War period to me, but hey, I, I could be wrong. So, I mean, my best guess from the neighborhood I was in, um, which was uh, established in the early 1900s, that this is probably from around World War I era. But that's one of my favorite finds of the entire trip. Uh, and then to some of the other better coins, uh, old nickels. I got a 1939, second year of the Jeffersons. Um, I did get that one V-nickel on the first day, which I was never able to recover the date on. It's in pretty rough condition. Um, this, the soil in western North Carolina from the areas I've been in, the soil is extremely rough um, on the old nickels. And I also got the buffalo, which is in 1936. Once again, pretty rough, but has a lot of detail on it. And... This was my oldest find, except for maybe that metal, that silver one. I'm not positive on the date, but unfortunately this Indian head didn't clean up. It's got a lot of environmental damage. But uh, 1884 Indian head, you can see all the detail. You can see the lines in the shield, the arrows, everything. So when that was dropped, it was in pretty close to mint condition. 1884 Indian head scent. Um, I got a couple more silver dimes other than those two mercs I showed. I had two other mercs, which were 1945 and the best condition, 1944. A lot of detail on that one. And then I did get one silver Roosevelt dime, which was the last year of issue, 1964 D. Beautiful condition. And this best silver coin of the trip was this 1930 Standing Liberty Quarter which I scratched because it was deep under roots but looks like somebody damaged it long before I came and got it out of the ground but it's still awesome to find a Standing Liberty Quarter and that's the last year they made them 1930 and there were no quarters minted in 1931 um, and then in 1932, it went right to the Washington quarters. And then just this little thing here, which I thought may be a button, but I'm not sure. It has some kind of interesting thing around the edges in the middle, but I think that's some kind of cap or lid to something and not a button. There's really nowhere where it looks like a shank would have been. So that was my finds from my North Carolina trip. I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed going along with me. So thanks everyone for watching and happy hunting.